May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from God's glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to God who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Those are beautiful words for a departure. Such affection for the recipients of this letter is clear, and the hope behind the words is palpable. When was the last time you received such affectionate commendations? Perhaps before going off on a trip, or setting off on an adventure, or a new undertaking, such loving words may have been packed into your spiritual rucksacks to be retrieved later on in the journey when your soul aches to hear them. Today we recognize the reign of Christ. It's the last Sunday in the season of Pentecost. You remember Pentecost? Mm -hmm. It was way back in June. It's a very long liturgical season and lectionary season for all of our readings. We've had a lot of experiences, haven't we? We've, had, uh, we've learned the journey of Jesus through the reflections of the Gospel writer Luke. We've explored the human divine relationship with our Jewish ancestors in the Hebrew text. And we've learned uh, and considered what the life was like for early Christians in the church through the letters of the epistles. Now the story comes to an end. The gospel today confronts us with the last moments in Jesus' earthly ministry. Before we can get into being people of the resurrected Christ, first we have to bring Jesus' mortal life to a close. Today we shift our thinking about the influence of Jesus in the world, in his life, in his work, in the mortal reign and the mortal world. This reign of God, so to speak, was deeply intimate. Jesus breathed on people, touched people. This throne of Jesus, as it were, was nestled deep within the quietest places of our hearts. After the resurrection, the reign of Christ will encompass all time and all space, and God's kingdom will come on earth just as it is in heaven. A glorious future awaits. But first, we must bring one part to a close. That's today. Endings are bittersweet, are they not? Endings give us time to reflect on lessons learned, blessings received, and the kind of people we've become for having taken part in the journey in the first place. In today's gospel, Jesus demonstrates exactly who he is and exactly what the nature of God is at the end of, the, of this part of this story. Distilled down to the briefest moment of human interaction, we learn this about who Jesus is and the nature of God. Jesus is integrity in the face of overwhelming difficulties. Jesus is peace in the face of destructive chaos. Jesus is grace and hospitality in the face of hostility and humiliation. This is what Jesus expressed in so many ways while he walked amongst us, that he is consistent with this bearing at a time when no one would blame him for being otherwise, is proof enough of the genuineness of Christ's affection for us. The nature of God is forgiveness in the face of antagonism. God is welcome in the face of rejection. God is refusal to damn the damnable God will not be seduced by the lure of retribution. That's a human flaw. God is God and comes up close to us when compassion is needed because God is compassion for humanity. When we read the interaction between Jesus and one of the crucified criminals beside him, 
we hear a deeply loving commendation. Jesus says, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, it's not clear how long that day will be, <laughs> or what else this criminal will experience before the sun goes down. What is clear is this, that his endurance of the last day of his earthly pilgrimage will end with the greatest of grace. Jesus might have said, may you be made strong with all the strength that comes from God's glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to God who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. That's a lot to say when you're dying. So God says, you will be with me today in paradise. The beautiful commendation we read from the letter to the Colossians is not, in fact, a farewell address, but a blessing for the upcoming journey. The author of the letter to the community in Colossae was passing on to them words of spiritual advice for the journey of faith. He's commending them to move forward with the utmost courage and integrity. They are advised to lead with the virtue of patience. Be thankful for every day. Know that they are already enabled to do the work of the saints. And to take any pressure off of their expectations, the author assures them that a place is already set for them in heaven. Now that they have these words in their kit, they are free to engage the work of discipleship to which they have been called. For however long that will take, and through whatever challenges arise along the way, the Colossians can refer back to these words when their souls ache to hear them again. This is a beginning. For us, it's an ending, but it's also a beginning. Jesus dies for the third time in the liturgical year today. He died once on Palm Sunday, he died once on Good Friday, and now today. That's definitely an ending. But it ushers in the beginning. Next week we'll anticipate the coming incarnation of Christ, the birth of this same Jesus who dies today again. Next week we'll begin another year of engaging the discipleship to which we've been called. There will surely be challenges ahead. There may be disappointments. There's also a very good chance that some beautiful moments of divine grace, when Jesus himself walks through the doors of this little church to visit our community, just like he has in years past. Like the Colossians and the Apostles and all the other Christians that have made this earthly pilgrimage before us. We go forward with the confidence of all that's been commended to us. We know, just as the Colossians and the apostles and the criminal on the cross knew, that there is already a place for us in heaven. We cannot possibly fail in faith. So I could end it with, and that's good news right there. <laughs> we cannot possibly fail in our faith. For every setback, there will be another attempt. For every disappointing moment, there will be re redemption. For every exit, there is an entrance. For every ending, a new beginning. That's the foundation of our faith. Not even Jesus' death, no matter how many times we try to kill him, not even his death is the end. It's just the beginning of something even better. We become resurrection people every time Jesus dies on Holy Week. So let us bid a kind farewell to liturgical year C. There have been some good times in year C, good times, and some regrettable things too. So let's gather the lessons we've learned, wrap them up in the graceful commendations of our forefathers and foremothers, and pack them in our spiritual rucksacks because next week we're going to set off again. 
may we be made strong with all the strength that comes from God's glorious power. And may we be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to God, who has enabled us to share in the inheritance of his saints in light. That's 